Hello and welcome back to PHP Basics. My name is Sean and today I want to show you how to create a simple customized log file for your website. This is beneficial so you can track user activity if someone tries to access a page that they shouldn't be accessing or if someone enters the incorrect username and password so many times or if they access data that they shouldn't be accessing or trying to hack around that sort of stuff. Uh, you have a nice little log entry where you can view and see that sort of stuff. Just for demonstration, I'm going to create a simple form where a user has to guess a number. And if the number is incorrect, then it's going to write to that log file just so we can see how the thing works. Okay, so I have an includes.php file and I also have an index.php file. Let's go ahead and start this form. The method will equal post. And I'll just have a simple input field. Type will equal text. And the name will just simply be number. Then I'll have a submit button and we can see that on the screen here. Okay, so basically I can say if server request method is equal and the same byte type as post, then number is going to equal the post value of number. And I can say if number is not equal to five, then echo number is incorrect. Else, we can say echo number is correct. Okay, so as it is right now, if I enter one, it's gonna say one is incorrect. But if I enter five, it's gonna say five is correct. All right, so now I want it to write to a log file if this number is incorrect. I'm going to do all of that inside of this includes.php. All right, so we haven't really talked about functions a whole lot on this channel yet. Uh, so you can also consider this kind of an introductory to how functions work. Uh, I'm just gonna create a new function and I'll call it logger. So we're gonna send one argument to this and this is simply going to be log. This is the contents of what we want to send to our file. Now when working with files, a file may exist or it may not already exist. So we need to check to see if that file exists or not. And that's simple. We can just say if not file exists, and we'll just call this file log.txt, then file put contents to log.txt, and we'll just send nothing to it. So basically, if the file doesn't exist, we're gonna create it, but it's not gonna have any content inside of it. Okay, so what kind of information do I wanna capture? Well, let's say if I'm working on a live website, a production website, I wanna capture the IP address, I wanna capture the date and time that the user did what they did, and then have some sort of a custom uh, text attribute to that. User tried to access uh, invalid page or entered incorrect credentials or something like that. For the IP address, uh, that's simple. That's just the server super global of remote ADD are. We'll just call that uh, client IP. The time will equal a, a formatted date value of the month, day, and year, uh, hour, and minutes. We'll do AM and then just specify that on the Unix timestamp. And then our log what we want to show up in the log file itself will be passed through as an argument. So we won't specify that here inside the function. So now let's get the contents of our existing log file. So I'll just create a variable called contents and that's going to be file get contents of log.txt. All right, so this is just grabbing the existing contents. Now we want to append data to that so I'll just create the same variable contents dot equals because we're appending data to it. And then this is where we specify what we want to send to that file. So let's just say the IP address and then we'll send a tab, the time, and then the log, whatever that may be at the time. Let's go ahead and tab that out too. And then we'll do a carriage return. Okay, so it's going to show the IP address, tab, time, tab, and then the message that's displayed, and that's it. So now all we have to do is send that back to the file. We can do that with file put contents. We have to specify the file name, which is log.txt, and then contents, or whatever we're adding to that. This is all for this. So let me go back to my index page, and I want to include my includes.php file. And here where it shows the number is incorrect, all I'm going to do is say logger 
and then log. And instead of typing what I want to inside of log, I'm just going to create a variable. So we'll just say log equals user entered incorrect number. And then we'll just say the number inside of that. Okay, so now whatever we have here is going to be passed through here. So providing I don't have any syntax errors, if I refresh my page and I hit the number five, it's going to say five is correct. If I do the number one, it's going to say one is incorrect. But now if I look back, I've got a new file, log.txt. Let's go ahead and open that up. So I can see here uh, my IP address, the date and time, which is totally incorrect, and then the message that I'm actually logging. Um, let's go ahead and fix this date time here real quick. And I can do that by jumping up above where I'm trying to get the time. And I'll just use a function called date default time zone set America Chicago because I'm in central time. And now if I enter eight or something like that, look back at my log. Now it's got the correct time, 9.04 p.m. So this is one way of doing this. Now, one very big security issue with this is the fact that you're sending your log to the exact same file as your other files. So if someone did like a wget request against your website, they would be able to retrieve this text document. We actually should probably store this outside of our htdocs folder. So if I go back one, two directories, I can save this in my root xamp. So to do that, all we have to do is come in and change log.txt to count for those directories. So it's going to do period, period, forward slash, period, period, forward slash, log.txt, replace all of those. So now whenever I refresh this, if I look in my XAMPP folder, I now have a log.txt that lives there instead. So that wraps up this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those below and I appreciate you watching. I'll see you on the next one.